Welcome everybody. I am so glad you are joining us for another episode of Explorer Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen and I am so glad that you are tuning in with us today. You know, here in the United States, we are celebrating Women's History Month. So from the women who have made history in the past to the women in our lives today and the young women watching today's show, we see you. We encourage all of our viewers to check out biographies about women including our explorers to learn from their legacy. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. And this school year, every month is organized around a theme. So for March, we are exploring exploration. Yep, the importance of exploration, especially as a tool to help us better understand our world and to protect it. Today, our explorer does just that. We are welcoming Dr. Dalal Hanna. Dalal is a freshwater ecologist from Ottawa, Canada, meaning that she explores and researches rivers. This includes looking at the animals and plants that live near the water or in it, and when she looks at them, they give her information about if the river is healthy or not. Dalal also loves to share her passion with young people, like many of our viewers today. And through her charity, Riparia, she works with a team to take young people exploring by canoe and encourages them to investigate their local waterways and rivers. Today, Dalal is here to share how bodies of water, like streams, have secrets to tell us if we can open up our ears and our eyes and pay attention to them. So before we get into today's let's before we get into today's lesson, I would like to welcome our registered viewers who have joined us from all around the globe. Hello to Clarkson Public School, Castor Valley Elementary, Freedom Elementary, love that name, Union School, Bavarian International School, Harmony School Science in Austin. Hey y'all, howdy. And of course, all of our homeschools out there, we are thrilled to have you join us. And with that, let's pass this Explorer classroom over to Dalal. She will be sharing about the secrets of streams. Dalal, they're yours, take it away. Thank you so much. Good, good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be here with you today. I'm gonna share some pictures while I tell you a little bit about some of my favorite secrets. So here we go, can you see that? That looks like a yes. Excellent. So today I want to bring you on a journey through one of my favorite habitat types. This picture was actually taken with me working in this very special habitat type. Does any of you know what that habitat type is? You could take a guess by looking at the different elements of the picture. Some of you might type your answers into the chat. Those of you that are in classes, you could tell each other what you think it is. I'll give you a second. I see different answers coming in. Yes, that's right. This is a picture of a stream. And I love streams. I love them for so many different reasons that I'm very excited to share with you today. But one of my favorite things about streams is that even if they are little, they are mighty. Now, one of the ways that I like to think about streams is as little rivers. It's actually directly thanks to streams that we have big rivers like the one in this picture. Because streams flow into rivers and bring them the water that they need to exist. And I'm so thankful for that because one of my all time favorite things to do in the whole wide world is to canoe down rivers, just like in this picture. If we zoom in a little bit closer, this is what canoeing looks like. A canoe is a type of boat. Now, this is an especially good week of the year to be talking about streams and the water that flows through them because March 22nd, which is Wednesday of this week, is World Water Day, a day to celebrate water and all of the wonders that water supports. So there are two main different types of water on Earth. Do any of you know what these are? I'll give you a second to think about it. You can type your answers into the chat, tell your classmates, discuss it among yourselves two main types of water. I see some answers coming in through the chat. I see people chatting among each other. 
Yes, that's right. There's salt water, like in the oceans, and there's fresh water, or in other words, water that isn't salty, like in streams. And fresh waters are really important, not only because they're absolutely beautiful, but they're also places that provide us with many resources that we really need. Or in other words, they really help make our lives better. I mean, if we didn't have fresh waters, we wouldn't have water to drink. So clearly fresh water is very important because we all need water to drink. So this is a map of the earth and all of the white parts are where there are oceans. The gray parts are land and the blue that's on top of the gray is where there is fresh water. As you can see by all the blue on this map, fresh water covers many parts of earth. Now, these types of maps aren't necessarily easy to read. So to help you better understand what you're looking at, I've put a heart, uh, a big red heart, right over to the part of, part of the map that represents the middle of the United States, where most classrooms that are with us today are joining from. I know that there are some people that are joining from outside of the United States. Hello to you too. And uh, I hope that maybe your parents or your teachers can help you point out where you are on this map. And if we follow this black arrow or this gray arrow that I've put on the heart and go northeast of it, we find ourselves right back at this freshwater picture of this freshwater river that I showed you a picture of earlier. And I wanna bring you back here because I think it's a really great place to start the story of the work that I do as a stream scientist and National Geographic Explorer, which is the story that I wanna share with you today. So in this picture, I'm with my friend paddling down this river so that we can get to a stream. We're actually on our way to this stream to find out more about its health. And I care about the health of streams because they are the lifeline of freshwaters and all around the world. Without them, we wouldn't have rivers or lakes. We wouldn't have enough water to drink. There wouldn't be enough habitat for fishes to grow up in. And so for my job, one of the things that I do is compare the health of streams that are taken care of in different ways so I can help figure out the best way to continue to take care of streams. Now, what I wanna do next is show you some of the most important tools that my coworkers and I use to measure the health of streams. And I'm focusing on tools today because this month that's the theme that's being explored in Explorer Classroom. So by the end of our time together today, you'll have a better idea of how you can dis discover more about a stream the next time that you visit one. So what are the most important tools there is to find out more about streams are nets, like the one I'm holding in this picture. And I actually brought my net to my office with me today. It's a pretty cool net. It's long. It has very thin mesh. And what you do with this net is that you put it down in the bottom of a stream, like in this picture, and you use it to pick up some of the earth at the bottom of the stream. You can also rub the rocks that you find at the bottom of a stream and let whatever water is flowing through the stream bring what was on those rocks into your net. Then you flip those contents of the net into a tray and look through that earth. And you'll quickly discover that it isn't just dirt. There's tons of life in the earth at the bottom of streams. This video is going to show you some of the cool insects that live in the earth on the bottom of streams. So these little creatures that you see here are called macroinvertebrates. Oh, hold on a second. They always have two heads. Their gills are located on thorax areas. Sorry, we've got sound, which wasn't my intention. I'll just stop this. So those little creatures that you saw were called macroinvertebrates, and they are really cool insects. A microscope like this one is perfect for looking at them, and some microscopes even have cameras on them that allow you to take pictures like this one. So this is a good picture, still picture of what that video was showing. And I think these little insects are so cute. I mean, just like us, they have two eyes. Can you spot their eyes? I'll take my cursor to show you. They're right here and here. And we also see different parts of the insect. We see their abdomen here, or in other words, it's kind of like their tummy. We see their legs right here. And if you look for life in streams, you'll actually be surprised to discover that there are many insects like this one hiding in the bottom of streams. There's also lots of other life in streams. When I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was to try and catch fish in streams. 
So here's a picture of me doing that when I was just about the age of most, to, most of today's participants. So now that I've shown you one of the most important tools you can use to find out more about streams and their health, I have a challenge for you. Try and find the closest stream to your school or your house and go pay it a visit. Flip a rock at the bottom of that stream and see what you can find on that rock. You could even use a strainer like this one that you might find in your kitchen or at your house, um, or maybe even at your school, to try and pick up some of the dirt that's at the bottom of the stream and get rid of it and then see if there are insects left in that dirt. I can almost guarantee that if you look hard enough, you will be very surprised. There's so much life in streams and finding out more about that life is very important. It's actually one of the most important first steps in taking better of our streams and our fresh waters. So now I wanna invite you to remember that challenge and try and take it up as soon as the spring comes around. And uh, I also wanna hear more from you. So please share your questions with me now. I'll stop sharing my screen. Well, friends, we're towards the end of our show. You were such a magnificent audience and you had such wonderful questions. And Dalal, I wanna thank you for your expertise. I feel like I learned so much today and I bet others did too. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a huge pleasure to be here and I'm so excited to learn about what you all find out at your local streams. All right, everybody, you now have a charge. You have to go visit that stream and you got tips on how to be safe. You got tips on what to look for. And I hope that you'll share back with us, maybe on Twitter, maybe you'll even send us some pictures. We would love to find out what you learn about where you live. Well, I hope that you all had a good time today. I know I enjoyed Dalal. And to all of our students and teachers and homeschool families watching, thank you. Thank you for coming. I hope that you'll join more events. In fact, our next event is next Monday, same time. It'll be March 28th, and we're going to have explorer Carmen Chavez with us. And she's going to teach us how to spy on wildlife in the Amazon, but safely. Hmm, I wonder how, I wonder how that could happen. Hmm. So go ahead, register. We've got this event and so many more. Go to natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom. You can request an on-screen spot like our classrooms did today, or you can join us on YouTube. We've also got interactive guides for teachers to share with their students. And teachers, there's something called the Explorer Mindset and Action Guide. You can see it linked on the registration page and it is a wonderful resource. So to all of you little stream scientists out there, have a great day, stay curious and keep exploring. Bye everybody.